owner's acknowledgement and acceptance agreement for the Islamic Center of Naperville located at 3540 248th Avenue. There are 13 speakers in addition to the petitioner. There are six support positions and five opposition positions that have been posted to the website in addition with seven written comments. The first speaker will be Len Munson representing the petitioner. He will have 10 minutes to present then 13 speakers that will each have three minutes and then five minutes for Mr. Munson for rebuttal. Good evening. My name is Len Munson. I'm with the law firm of Kuhn, Heap, and Munson, 552 South Washington here in Naperville. And tonight I re represent the petitioner, uh, the Islamic Center of Naperville, in their conditional use petition for religious facility. The subject property, consists of a little bit over 13 acres on 240th Avenue in between 95th and 103rd. The history on this property, as can be seen here, has, uh, for, uh, shows that this property for a long time has been designated for a community or religious use, uh, back to 1998, really. And the petitioner's plan is to develop the project in five phases. The first phase, shown in green here, is the mosque, second school, third, a multi-purpose hall, fourth gymnasium, and fifth, uh, the expan expansion of the original mosque uh, building. In total, this would consist of, after the fifth uh, uh, phase, of a little bit over 121,000 square feet on 13.3 acres. But to put the plan size into perspective, I think it's a very important To note that the rated design capacity, the number of worshipers that will fit into the, or that are allowed into the uh, worship hall, will be 457 until the year 2061, when we anticipate uh, launching the fifth uh, um, uh, phase, which increased the capacity to about 816. Again, to put it in perspective, St. Peter's and Paul right now in their main church facility has a capacity of over 900 and over 200 in their chapel, Yellow Box down the street has a capacity of, of 1,000, and our friends at Calvary have a seated capacity of 2,850 people. So of course, occupancy or rate design capacity is just one factor of size. Let's look at another important aspect, and that's the size of the buildings. As I mentioned, the Islamic Center, will, the first mosque building will be a little over 28,000 square feet, after the fifth and final phase, the entire project would be a little bit over 121,000 square feet. Put in that perspective, St. Peter's and Paul is currently 142,000 square feet, yellow box 87, compass 85, and Calvary at a whopping 303,000 square feet. Regarding lot size, ICN's on a lot of, a little bit over 13 and a third acres. Compass is on 11 and a third acres. St. Raphael, 10 and a half. St. Thomas, 10. Yellow Box, 7. And St. Peter's and Paul, 4. So what does all this information on occupancy, floor space, and lot size tell us? In comparison to existing religious facilities, ICN has a relatively small occupancy. Its square footage is less than many other religious facilities. And ICN is located on a larger lot than a number of other religious facilities with larger capacity, occupancy capacity. In other words, we are much less dense and have less impact on the community than other existing religious facilities that operate peacefully and well today in Naperville. Of course, size is not the only factor to take into consideration. Parking and traffic consider considerations are also critical. Regarding parking, we've got a unique situation. The city code requires one parking spot for every three occupants of a church. That doesn't work for ICN. We need much more parking. The reason for that is most uh, traditional churches, their holy days on Sunday. So what happens? Husband, wife, 1.3 kids get in the car and drive to church. With the Muslim faith, Friday afternoon, early Friday afternoon, is their peak time for the religious service. So what happens? We've got one person leaving from an office, one person leaving from home with 1.3 children. We need more parking. So even though the code says we only need one point, uh, uh, three spaces for every occupant, we voluntarily agreed to lower that to 1.4. So we have double the uh, parking spaces than everybody else has to have. But we need it. 
Regarding traffic, 248th uh, uh, Avenue is an arterial, uh, arterial road currently carrying approximately 12,000 cars a day, and that's soon to be improved. And our, so our, we anticipate about 356 cars at the peak time, uh, uh, peak, the peak service on Friday afternoons. And it's also important to note that our peak use is outside of the traditional rush hours. We're early Friday afternoon. Rush hours are on Friday, or excuse me, are in the morning and the evening. And our, as our traffic study indicated, our, our anticipated traffic is less than half, the traffic, excuse me, the traffic on 148th would be less than half than at the um, uh, rush hour times during the day. As you may recall, the, we've had public hearings on this since January 20th of this year. And there's been many changes that have been made as a result of this, these extensive public hearings. We've already agreed, number one, to remove our variance request for a front yard setback. That, entire, that, that entailed us moving the entire project 10 feet. That's not an easy thing to do. We had to do all new engineering, all new parking configuration, everything. We did it. We removed our land at the request of, in, in popular demand, we removed our land banked uh, parking. We removed the far, uh, parking variance, excuse me, the variance from uh, uh, removing the fence on the north side of the lot. And also, more importantly, we've expanded the buffer between us and our neighbors to the south by. Uh, by 22 and I would write by 20 by 20 and a half feet. Currently, the code says we have to be five, our parking lot has to be five feet from the property line. We rearranged everything, so now we have 27 and a half feet of extra sp of buffer space on the south uh, with our neighbors to our south and uh, to uh, open up the, the, the area in general. Now, these physical changes have already been agreed to and they're already incorporated in the plans you have before you. And in addition to these changes, ICN has agreed to many conditions which are shown in great, de which are shown in great detail in the OAA agreement that you have in your packet. So I'll run through these very quickly. These include, we agree to an, uh, add an interim left turn lane on 240th Avenue. We agree to have traffic management, in other words, uh, 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 sworn officers paid, you know, uh, hired by us to direct traffic during our peak times. Also, we're going to have a volunteer crossing, cross guard at the trail located just to the north of us during our peak times. We've agreed to limit our worship hall capacity to not exceed 457 for the first four phases. We've agreed to submit for every phase. We've agreed to submit our plans and all studies, traffic plan, parking plan, everything, to staff for review and approval prior to get, uh, obtaining uh, any uh, building permits for any future phases. We've also agreed to limit phase five. We cannot start phase five unless we do a full conditional use approval through the Planning and Zoning Commission and the City Council pursuant to the rules in, in place at that time. We've agreed that we'd only build phases one and two prior to the 248th Avenue expan expansion. Uh, as I mentioned, we've required, we've, we've, as far as I'm concerned, we're way over our park, but we've, we've uh, agreed to uh, 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 have 422 spaces at phase one, and we also agreed to a fire type department review at each phase to make sure that the fire trucks can safely negotiate our area. Uh, we've agreed to, before phase two, we'll uh, create a full school, school pickup and drop off plan to be reviewed by staff prior to issuing a building permit. We've agreed to administrative approval of changes to the building materials. We've agreed to pay for half of the uh, traffic signal that it's coming in the future on uh, Locust, and also we have agreed to limit any amplification. We're, no, we're allowing no amplification or speakers on the side of the building, on outside of the building. So, as you can see, we've made many changes and agreed to many conditions. Since the t October 6th Plan and Zoning Public uh, Hearing, six weeks ago. There has been a great effort by the city staff, by the city council, by the mayor, to balance other concerns of the neighbors with the petitioner's rights and proposed plans. I'm happy to say that these efforts have paid off. While I'm not sure I understand the exact association details, it is my understanding that the Tallgrass, Pencross Knolls, and Ashwood Point Homeowners Associations and other neighbors, concerned neighbors, formed a group named the Naperville Residents for Sustainable Development. 
City Council and staff have had extensive communications with this group, with the group, and the group has agreed to not oppose and support our petition based on two conditions. The first one, in reference to staff administration approval of each, of each uh, phase, we've agreed that in addition to the staff approval, prior to issuance of a building permit for phases three and phase four, city staff shall present the conditions that would be required to be satisfied in order for a building permit for phase three and phase four to be issued, if any, to city council for approval. If no conditions are recommended by staff, a presentation to that effect will, shall be made to the city council for its consideration and approval. The speaker's time is up. Okay. Would you like me to, to cover the second one? You know what? I think, uh, I think I have to read into record. I, I think we, I, I need to hear it myself, so yeah. I'd, I'd like to hear the second one as well. Okay, absolutely. The 6.11 refers to where this would be inserted into the OAA that you have before you, and the proposed Condition on 6.12, the owner and developer agrees to post a sign on the subject property no later than 15 days after submission of any portion of the future submittals for phases three and four. Providing notice of said submittals, city council review and approve, approval shall not occur less than 90 days after the sign has been posted. So in addition to the changes and conditions we already agreed to, ICN agrees to these conditions, provided that the Naperville, re, uh, resident, uh, re, re, Naperville residents for sus, um, sustainable development agrees. I believe there's a representative from this group here tonight. I believe it's Terry McDonald, and I think she, she has to make a comment on that. That's it. Tara? Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tara McDonald, and I'm a board member of the Naperville Residence for Sustainable Development, which includes the subgroup uh, Neighbors for Neighborhood Mosque. And we've been working with residents from various South Naperville subdivisions, including Tallgrass, Ashwood Point, and Pencross Knoll, um, over the course of these proceedings. And I'm here to um, inform everyone that we are in agreement with the ordinance as it's been proposed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go ahead and hear the speakers at this point. Appreciate Councilman Hinerlon. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Len? Sir. So would a notice go out to the residents within so many feet, or just the sign? No, just, just posting a sign. Just posting a sign. Yes. Okay. It'll be the there. same size that's required for the zoning re requirements. Okay. So it's three by five, I think. Yep. Um, also, you didn't mention five. Is that because it's got to go through the process anyway? Okay. Yes, go through full conditional use. That's yep. why. Just, just want to confirm. Thank you. Councilman, Thank you, Mayor. Yep, sorry. Councilman Holzar. Thank you, Mayor. I had a question for Tara. She's still here. <coughs> Tara, if you can step back up, please. Yes. Councilman Holzar. Oh. Hi, Tara. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I had a question. I got an email at... Uh, a little after five tonight, so it was uh, just came as a little surprise. It was from um, somebody whose name was uh, Va Vasudevan Sivalingam, um, and it, it was a little confusing. But in it, it stated that he was from Ashwood Point Community. Uh, I wasn't sure if that meant he was an official representative of Ashwood Point Community or was just a citizen there. Um, I guess the first question I have is, are you familiar with this gentleman? Um, could you say the name again? Yeah, so it's, sorry, it's really small type. It's Vasu Devan Sivalingam? Yes, Vasu is a, is a board member. Okay, is he, the, is he the president of Ashwood Point by any chance? Yes. Okay, yes. so, I mean, just so you're aware, just so this is on the record, um, he filed a statement of opposition to um, this project at, I think it was 10, 15 a.m. today or so. Okay. So is he on board with the group's proposal or is he in opposition to what? I was not aware that he had submitted that. We did have a representative from Ashwood Point at our, at our meeting last night. It wasn't Vasu, it was someone different. Um, just to be clear though, the HOAs are not members of the Naperville Residents for Sustainable Development. We're a residence group that's just representing residents. So the HOAs are not uh, officially board members. 
or members of the group in that capacity. There are individual board members um, who are acting like as, as residents, um, not in official capacity for the HOA that are part of this group, but this group and I do not represent any of these HOAs. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. I'll just stay here in case you need me. Okay. All right, uh, Ms. Schatz. The first speaker is Brian Hufford. The following speaker is Fatima Allah. And if you're on deck, if you can just move down uh, to the front and sit in one of these open seats here uh, so we can keep this moving, that'd be great. So if the next speaker can come forward also. Hi, my name is Brian Hofford. I'm a professor at North Central College and a resident of Naperville for over 20 years. Uh, and I'm in the Religious Studies Department. And when we, uh, we heard that there was a great deal of opposition to this uh, ICN development, and uh, we looked into it, and we were a little concerned and, and thought that, uh, that uh, we should share our, our own experiences. In a nutshell, we teach a course called Introduction to World Religions, uh, all four members of the department. And as part of that course, students are asked to uh, go to a religious service uh, somewhere in, in the community and write a report of their experiences. Uh, and um, I wanted to uh, share with you that uh, we as the four different faculty members have all personally visited ICN locations, had wonderful experiences, and uh, uh, every single uh, student who's written a report without exception has also had wonderful experiences. And so, you know, we just regard ICN as a really cherished member of the community uh, and support their expansion. Uh, and uh, we just, uh, I'm, I'm here to represent the entire department. Uh, they, they're all in agreement with me on this. So thank you. Folks, 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 no clapping, please. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Fatima Alla, followed by Mark Winters. Good evening, and thank you to the City Council and staff for your time and consideration. My name is Fatima Ala, and I am representing ICM. I am a college student from the South Point subdivision close to the 248 site. 10 years ago, when I was in elementary school, ICM was in this hall discussing the annexation of the 248 site. After everything was done, the ICN community went back to what we do as our act of worship service. ICN has proven over the years to be a trustworthy and service-oriented asset to the city and residents of Naperville. The Islamic Center gave young people like me the opportunity to give back, whether it was by volunteering at free health care clinics, offering free tutoring to students, delivering groceries to the elderly, or even civics programs like the recently held City Council Candidate Forum. But, and there's always a but, as the ICN community continues to grow, we have been limited by the lack of space. We've had to limit or cut service activities and significantly ignore the large growth of the Muslim community. We hope to soon have a mosque that will not only adequately support the Naperville Muslim community, but also an Islamic center that serves the Naperville community at large including our friends in Tallgrass and other subdivisions. 10 months ago, I was still in high school when we began the PZC hearings. The process was, shall I say long, but so be it. Everything that could have been said had been said. ICN provided everything it could, and possibly more than they should when compared to other religious centers, in an effort to be as transparent as possible. These plans reflect a willingness to listen and respond, a willingness to work with its neighbors in an equitable way, not only these past few months, but throughout the years. The ACLU in 2020 published a serious report stating that unfairly exaggerated traffic and noise concerns with mosque plans have been a consistent pattern in city council meetings across the country. But given the reputation of our city, I am hopeful that we won't follow that trend. The goal of this mosque is community and service. In Islam, we are taught that we cannot cause our, our neighbors any harm or danger. 
ICN will honor that faith and legal obligation. What makes Naperville unique is its openness to diversity, but the construction of a mosque has pitted neighbor against neighbor. This is a result that no one should want. We are one Naperville. Soon, the council will vote and the ICN community will go back to what it does best, service. I hope 248 can be a part of that service. The next speaker is Mark Winters, followed by Lucy Evans. Good evening, members of City Council, Mr. Cherico, Mr. Krieger. I am Mark Winters, resident of Naperville and pastor of First Congregational United Church of Christ. I'm also a member of the Naperville Interfaith Leaders Association Steering Committee. I speak to you today in strong support of all phases of the Islamic Center of Naperville's project on 248th. I hate traffic as much as anyone. It's why I actually moved to Naperville in the first place. I didn't want to sit in traffic driving back and forth to my job in Naperville. In my 10 minute commute, I passed two churches. Well, more than that, but two of them are Bethany Lutheran and St. Raphael's. Both large facilities, which include schools. Have there been times when traffic from those churches blocked up Modaf and I had to find an alternate route? Yep. Has it annoyed me? Absolutely. This afternoon, I walked through the neighborhood around my church and I saw the traffic from parents picking up students from Saints Peter and Paul. Franklin was completely blocked from eastbound traffic almost two blocks, nearly to Washington Street. We as a community, however, have accepted these inconveniences because we appreciate the value of these churches in our city. ICN's project would also provide value to our city. And especially once 248th is widened, it won't create nearly as much disruption as these examples. It may actually reduce lines at some public schools if parents take their kids to school at ICN instead. But frankly, I hope that you and the city staff are looking at traffic and transportation issues far beyond any one individual building project, particularly as we're examining how we might reduce our city's carbon footprint. It's simply not fair to put an undue burden for complicated citywide issues onto one building project. I realize there's some hesitation to approve later phases, which are still some years away. It sounds like approval of these phases are getting, is getting delayed at this point, but for the record, as a citizen and a faith leader, I don't believe it's fair to make a community of faith jump through more hoops or deal with more red tape simply because they have the forethought to present their plan to you all at once while having the fiscal discipline to not build it all at once. Faith communities rely on our members to finance our projects and we generally prefer to only build when we have the money to do so. The fact that they are sharing their multi-decade plan at this point is a remarkable level of transparency for the city and for their future neighbors. I appreciate your attention to my remarks and your commitment to our city's mission statement to create an inclusive community that values diversity. Projects like this one clearly support this mission. If any aspects of this are hard decision for you, I urge you to prioritize these values and prioritize the American value of free exercise of religion, even when the decisions may be unpopular in the short term or create temporary inconveniences. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Lucy Evans, followed by T.M. Narasimhan. Your uh, Mayor, I was wondering if we could just clarify for the crowd so they know that we, the on the agenda today is that we are looking to approve phases one through four. There might be some confusion based on Mr. Winter's statement here. I don't think there's any confusion at all. He oh, okay. I just wanted that. to make sure it was clear for. Yeah. Go ahead. Hi, good evening. I'm Lucy Evans, and I, I will keep this brief. I just wanted to come here to express my support for this project. I think it's been a long time coming, and uh, one of the things that makes Naperville such a great livable city is the presence of so many places to worship. And I think the um, ICN community will continue to be good neighbors if this mosque is approved. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is T.M. Nurasimhan, followed by Jean Page. Hi there. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, T.M. Nurasimhan, a resident of Naperville for 23 years. I raised two children who are away in college. Uh, thanks to the city and the facilities and the opportunities and a peaceful neighborhood that we all enjoy. Uh, for the record, I'm opposing this facility 
um, only for the size and the utility value and the purpose for each of the additional buildings other than the main place of worship that is proposed to be constructed. So the main um, place of worship is a very small percentage of the entire facility that's supposed to be constructed. And these are the ones that's going to bring the additional traffic and all the other nuisances along with it. Because I travel through 248, live in tall grass. So we are directly affected by it. And <clears throat> I've spoken to many of my neighbors uh, during the PCC hearings, and I have personally gone and talked to them. In principle, 99% of the people are not opposed to this facility as a religious institution. But the size and the scope of it is what we are concerned about and what it brings to the neighborhood without uh, the five-stage five, five stage or six-stage expansion. So what we request is the council to please consider the impact of the neighborhood of three or four communities. And uh, many people talked about um, churches and other things, religious institutions being in neighborhoods. But in most cases, those institutions were already there when the buildings and the houses went up. In this case, it's the opposite. So it's a little different than trying to, I would say, comparing apples and oranges. So that needs to be considered, again, from a common sense perspective. In principle, the neighbors that I spoke to, several of them, where we got signatures for their PCC hearing, where they all said that they were in opposition to the, to the scope of this building, only for the scope and the size and what traffic it brings in, basically. So um, uh, my request to the council is, please consider all the signatures, all the uh, people that have raised concerns about the size and the scope of the facility, and please um, uh, do the right thing by restricting it to the appropriate size of what the land use is, basically. So that's the only thing I've got to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next speaker is Jean Page, followed by Anise Raman. Good evening, Mayor Chirico and City Council members. My name is Jean Page. I live in Campus Green. I'm speaking this evening for my family regarding the new worship space built at 248th Avenue. Our ask of you is to give final approval on construction for the Islamic Center of Naperville. ICN has agreed to every change of plans brought up at various meetings. They've been excellent neighbors who plan their new space thoughtfully, carefully, following the direction of planning and zoning who approved the project with a six to one vote. ICN has altered the building, I'm sorry, also ICN has altered the build multiple times to address the concerns of local residents. Please vote yes to this valuable cultural asset in our community. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Anise Raman, followed by Dalip Kikla. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. My name is Anise Raman and I'm a resident of Naperville and member of the Islamic Center of Naperville, both for over 20 years. I am the lead for ICN for this project. I have been working with the city staff on the do's and don'ts, cans and can'ts, allowed and not allowed, and overall coordination for multiple years. I was also the one who, on behalf of ICN, proactively reached out to the various HOAs to foster open and transparent communications and listen to and address their concerns. Over the past almost one year, I, along with the ICN board, have been working with the city staff under the guidance of our attorney, Mr. Munson, to address the concerns of our neighbors and to gain the recommendations of approval from the Planning and Zoning Commission, which I'm happy to report we achieved with a six to one favorable vote. I'm also happy to report that the staff concurs with the PZC's recommendation for approval. During the PZC process, ICN listened to our neighbors and city staff and bent over backwards and agreed to many, if not all of their practical requests, which include but not limited to the following. Number one, eliminated parking along the south property line to gain additional setback. Number two, eliminated variance request on west property line to setback reduction. Number three, eliminated variance request on north property line to eliminate the fencing. Number four, agreed to provide additional south entrance under phase one to address traffic concerns. Number five, provided modifications to 248 Avenue to address traffic concerns. Number six, increased the size of our parking lot to address parking concerns. Seven, added police assistance at both parking lot entrances to direct traffic on event days. Number eight, added crossing guards at pedestrian crossing on event days. Nine, provided drop off and pickup maps for school days. And number 10, provided facility usage times and occupancies for our facilities. These are in addition to many items that Len Munson uh, mentioned in his presentation. 
Through our many meetings with the city staff and HOAs, we have alleviated many other concerns that were brought up during this uh, valuable process. Throughout this process, the bar has been raised for ICN on, uh, for additional concessions. The most recent concessions being our phase five coming back for full review prior to approval and our phases three and four coming back to city council for review. ICN has agreed to both of these requests. ICN could have pushed back to and argued on many of these items, but we agreed to them because they made sense. And even though they, inc they increased construction cost, we made these changes to ad address the concerns of our neighbors. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the various HOAs for their active involvement, the city staff for their years of excellent service and professionalism throughout the process, and the PZC for their six, and, six to one recommendation for this project. With all, due, with all due respect for the work that has been done over the past few years and the concessions made by ICN, I humbly request that you approve the ICN project so we can continue to serve the ICN community and continue to be excellent neighbors as we have with our other three facilities for over 30 years. Thank you. The next speaker is Dilip Kikwa, followed by Steve Reef. Hello, my name is Dilip Kikla. I'm a resident of Ashwood Point in Naperville. Our community residents have had concerns around traffic with the scale of the ICN complex right outside our community, right in front of our main entrance. In the PCC meeting, we heard comments like, what's the big deal? There may be maybe 10 minutes delay on Fridays. That's not true. Based on the intake traffic study alone, there will be around 3,000 round trips due to school prayer, prayer activity, gym activity, multipurpose hall usage, and many other events not yet are accounted for at this time. Over 3,000 trips right outside our main entrance. This will bring the traffic level the LOS level to F rating, which is the worst and prone to accidents. Throughout the day from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., all days of the week, not only Fridays. And this F level traffic, in doing all of this, our neighbors are dropping the kids, picking up the kids, going to work, heading back from work, grocery shopping, trying to get home and carry out other activities in this F level of traffic. You can imagine the chaos it's going to create right outside our community entrance. Why do you wish this for our neighbors, South Nepal residents who are also voters? Later, I see and revise the numbers, but it's still level F traffic right outside our community. This is not a speculation. This data is based from Intec parking study. And this is why residents are concerned. No traffic light or crossing guard is going to solve this problem. Our sincere plea to you is not to grant this conditional approval of this complex at this scale. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The next speaker is Steve Reif, followed by Jeremy Sentman. Good evening. Uh, my name is Steve Reif, and I'm a 15-year resident of South Naperville. I would like to remind the city council that there are some serious concerns about the increased safety risks to our children, as well as our adults, that use the Greenway Trail. I personally use the trail uh, frequently, and I can tell you without a doubt, uh, during my 20-mile rides on the trail, 248 is the most dangerous intersection I have to cross. And it is by far more dangerous uh, than other areas that are on the trail. Uh, because of this, uh, traffic does not often stop and, and recognize not only pedestrians, but bikers as well. And that's currently happening. The addition traffic uh, that's going to be coming with this construction, which will be arriving and departing in short bursts of time, as you've heard, makes me believe that somebody is going to get hurt if this isn't taken seriously. Tonight, with your approval of phase one and two, uh, are you fully considering the risk that is imposed uh, for safety over, because we are gonna have over 2,400 vehicle trips on 20, uh, 248th on a given Friday? 
These are not my numbers, they are from the ICN's data and analysis. And they will add approximately 1,500 Greenway Trail crossings every Friday with these trips. The number for Saturday when the Greenway uh, Trail is at its uh, max during the week, uh, those numbers would be similar. While they may have control at some points of the day, as you've heard, this traffic has a 15-hour window. The design of the north exit, which is just a short distance away uh, from the trail, will direct vehicles towards the trail, picking up speed up to 45 miles an hour, and it just doesn't make sense from a safety standpoint. So I ask that we uh, come together uh, to find a solution before the construction begins. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Jeremy Sentman, followed by Tara McDonald. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the City Council. On behalf of the Tallgrass Homeowners Association, located at 3324 Deering Bay Drive, my name is Jeremy Sentman. I want to talk about, uh, at this point, the, the conditional use, the process. The last time I spoke before this body was 10 years ago. I was here when the annexation was being presented and moved through. And at the time, Councilman Miller said the HOAs would have an opportunity to address the project during the conditional use process after annexation when that happened. And that process started in earnest back in January of this year. And Mr. Mayor, you'll remember a conversation we had about, about the process, right? We, we joked uh, for, for our group and our team and, and Mr. Munson, I'm sure ICN, it's been a long process. <laughs> Everybody, I think, can uh, admit and agree to that. But what has come out of that process is a better product. And you will recall when you and I talked, it's tough. It's grueling. It's difficult. The process is difficult. And it's difficult for a reason, right? Because your comment, and I agree 100% with you, is that at the end of the day, because of the process, the product is better. The product is better. And that has shown true in this instance. Staff's initial report in January approved recommend, recommended approval for both variances and the project with no conditions. We don't have that today. What we have, which Attorney Munson ran through, is a whole host of new conditions, right, that are better, right? The process is better when the public is involved. The HOA's concern here at this point is with the current ordinance as proposed, meaningful public comment now has been removed. The conditional use process now will only be available for phase five. So it's incumbent on this body because it comes back to you. Staff will work with the petitioner and they've done a fantastic job. But, but for the efforts of the public, we wouldn't have these conditions and we would not have a product today that is better than it was in January. And it is incumbent on this body for the residents of Naperville that you ensure that public comment is listened to, that the citizens uh, are, are heard in the future phases that, that move through. Um, thank you for your consideration. And, and please, on behalf of all of the residents through this process, it's a grueling process for sure. Please ensure there is meaningful public comment as this project moves forward. Thank you. If you can hold one second, please. Councilman uh, Holzhauer. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Jeremy, I had a couple of follow-up questions. Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, just wanted to verify, you are an attorney representing the Tallgrass Homeowners Association, correct? We have an attorney, an outside counsel that represents us, that's Dan Shapiro. I am, in fact, an attorney, and I am also a uh, homeowner within the Tallgrass uh, Homeowners uh, Association. I, I live in Tallgrass, and the board had approached me 10 years ago to help consult uh, on this project. Okay, but you, you are not retained to represent them in this matter. That's correct. I'm working with the HOA. Okay. Uh, one other thing, uh, I noticed you thrown on the, uh, mentioning the term conditional use. I'm sure you're probably familiar. The, the plan that's on the table does not talk about phases three and four being conditional use. It does talk about future council check-in with public input. It's not talking about a conditional use. Do you object to the plan that's on the table? Do I object to the plan? Yes. Uh, 
We believe that the plan, I, I, I personally believe that the city of Naperville and this process is better when the residents have a voice. And I think that the current plan on the table takes that voice off. Uh, it takes that voice off? That, that's correct. There's no, uh, the, my understanding is that the current plan that's on the table has city council oversight with administrative review, working with the petitioner for phases three and four with conditional use for phase five. Okay, but, but you object to the lack of conditional use for phase three and four. Am I clearing that correctly? We, we would like to see conditional use for, uh, for all of the phases, um, but w we are going back. Um, there's been a, a, a tremendous amount of uh, development here within the last day and especially within the last week on this, um, but I'm prepared. We are prepared to take back to uh, the board uh, recommending the ordinance on uh, as drafted. Okay, so you are in support then. Of we're, the not, I'm not, I'm not in, we're not. We're not. I'm not in support. I, I think that it's better if it was a conditional use. But we are. Um, you're, you're not opposing. We are not opposing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Tara McDonald, followed by Molly Evans. Thank you, Tara. The next speaker is Molly Evans, followed by Kira Shah. Molly. Hi everyone, my name is Molly Evans and I am a 13 year resident in South Naperville. First, I just wanna thank you all for your time tonight and for your service and commitment to this great community. This has been, let's just, an extraordinary journey. Not exactly the experience I thought I was getting into a year ago, uh, but I guess the silver lining is that I, I've learned more about our city government than I ever knew I wanted to. We appreciate that you all took time to meet with us, and many of you several times, and listen to our fact-based concerns. We weren't afforded that same opportunity during the PZC process, as we were told PZC members were not able to speak with the residents outside of the public hearing process. So being able to meet with all nine of you uh, over the course of the year felt like you were really interested in listening to the residents' concerns. So I just want to acknowledge that and we really appreciate that. While we're not exactly happy about um, how things have played out through this process, um, in the spirit of collaboration, we are in agreement with the ordinance as, as proposed and made a conscious decision to work in good faith. However, it's really important to our group that you know that our concerns still remain. We are in favor of a neighborhood-sized mosque. That has never been the issue. But we still have concerns with the size and the scope and the detrimental impacts that traffic and traffic safety could have and the safety of our tall grass greenway trail of which not only affects are the residents, but also the ICN members. As I reflect back on this journey, I think it's important to share where we started almost a year ago and where we are today. Yes, some things have absolutely changed, but when you peel back the layers, we're actually in the same place than where we started. There were 121,000 square feet in the original plans. Today, there's still a 121,000 square foot campus. There were a 901 parking spaces in the original plan. Today, there's a 1,002 parking spaces that would need to be, that, that are needed for all five phases. It was originally phase one and then phase two, 10 years later. Now it's phase one and two before 248th Avenue improvements, which are supposedly, supposedly planned for 2024. So today it's the two phases up. in two years instead of two phases in 10 years. Thank you for your time. Thank you. The final speaker is Kayer Shah, followed by Len Munson. 
Good evening, council members and mayor. Uh, uh, <clears throat> we may uh, be in agreement with the ordinance, but I think it's important to highlight some of the calms between the ICN proposed facility and other religious facilities in South Naperville. Religious facilities in South Naperville with only one road to access, like 240th Avenue, have no more than 316 parking spaces. Larger facilities with more than 316 parking spaces are on a corner. This is a consistent planning principle applied across all South Naperville religious facilities. Larger facilities logistically need more roads to, of access to traffic flow. Putting a 121,000 square foot facility on one road with up, to 100, with up to 1,002 parking spaces is poor planning and creates risk. Is anyone concerned that this proposed facility is such a drastic departure from planning principles used for the other South Naperville religious facilities? Let's talk about St. Peter and Paul. We've heard about St. Peter and Paul throughout the entire proceedings. It is the only comp that supporters can come up with to try to justify the size of this proposed facility in this location. But can we all acknowledge that St. Peter's and Paul was built 175 years ago? And then the city of Naperville was built around it. I think that planning has come a long way in 175 years, and this is the only calm to justify this 240th Avenue development. Then doesn't that tell us something? We know that a school is an allowed land use in our one zone. No one disputes that. But the phase two school high level four plan shows 730 desks. That's more students than attending the local district 204 Fry Elementary School that serves the entire Tallgrass subdivision and some surrounding neighborhoods. This may not be an issue if the access was different, but there is no approved school pickup plan that shows cars won't back up onto 248th Avenue. Staff has kicked this can down the road and taken an approve it now and figure it out later approach. The phase three banquet hall has more event space than the largest rentable space at Naperville uh, Marriott. The phase four fitness facility is four times larger than the gym at Alleluia Lutheran Church. It is also three times larger than the local Fry Elementary School, which has 600 students. Please look at the proposed plans. This development barely fits on the site. Was the intent of allowing religious facilities in R1 single family home zone, zones to use every buildable square foot, have a mostly impervious area, and operate as a high traffic generating multi-facility development with concurrent uses? The residents don't think so, and the new comprehensive master plan that the city will approve after this project is pushed through doesn't think so either. How do you feel about up. that? Thank, Thank you for your time. Len Munson now has five minutes for rebuttal. Thank you. Once again, it all boils down to size. And I just can't, I just, I, 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 I have a hard time grasping this. Religious facilities under city code are supposed to be built in residential areas. Look at uh, St. Raphael. It's on side streets. Um, I think Elizabeth Seton is too. Most churches are on side streets. Here we've got the perfect property for a religious facility. It's been designated as one for 20, you know, 20 years. We have access to a major, an arterial road. It does not have direct access onto side streets. And we keep on hearing about size. As I pointed out in my, in my uh, presentation, we have 13.3 acres, which is more than any of the comps I had. 13.36 is the largest one, other than Calvary, is the largest one I could, the lot I could come up with for the church in town. And what we got, 121,000 square feet. Yes, I use St. Peter's Paul as a comparison because they're 142. But the reason I don't use St. Raphael, because I can't, I can't get the information. What do they have? They've got a gymnasium. They've got a school. They've got a church. I think they have a chapel too. These, you know, and keep on going down, you know, so the size can't fit. Here's what we really think about. 
Let's look at what we have in this town for religious facilities. How do they fit in? They're on side streets. Using the math and the numbers everyone's come up with here, there shouldn't be a church in this town. Traffic, come on. At our peak time for the first four phases, where you generate about 356 cars per, per service. The road already has 12,000 cars on it. We acknowledge the trail that's north of us, it's not on our property. It is a problem. It's not our problem, it's the city's problem, it's the park district's problem. And what do we do? We agree it's not our property. What do we do? We agree, no, during our peak times, we'll put a crossing guard there because it's the right thing to do, it's a safe thing to do. The real question here is, you know, I mean, how do all these other churches fit in town? Wait, Compass Church, Hobson and Worley. Currently, I think they're 85,000 square feet. 2003, City Council approved a long-term conditional use. They can expand their current their, 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 their site by over 200,000 square feet. 120,000 for the uh, yeah, I also can't remember. 120,000 dollars for the um, um, well, it's 10,000 for uh, uh, 10,000 feet for the uh, seating area, 73,000 for school, and uh, 120,000 for worship area. This, you know, that's already that's already in the books. When that went through, did we go through all this? Are they on the merge, uh, major arterial? This is, you know, and this compass has been a problem. No, it's just, you know, it, 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 to think that, you know, it's it, 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 we heard from the expert at the planning commission. That, you know, oh my God, this traffic, you know, it's going to decrease the value of houses by, you know, by 5%. Really? So the, 12, the existing 12,000, which is anticipated to go to 18,000 in a few years, that's not decreasing value? And our, our, our facility is? It's just, it's, it's ludicrous as far as I'm concerned. Um, at this time, and, and oh, so talking about size, I, there was something thrown about the multi purpose hall size. It's, the multi-purpose hall has a capacity of 500 people, and it's 22 or 25,000 square feet, I don't recall right now. At Planning and Zoning Commission, Oriana uh, uh, Van Summeren volunteered that St. Peter's and Paul's, their multi-purpose hall is 42,000 square feet. Our gymnasium, we've heard constantly, oh, that gymnasium is huge. Our gymnasium is one basketball court and 1,000 square foot training area. That's it. And that takes up about 23,000 square feet. So, you know, this, you know, is this, is this you know, and I, I do have to agree with Jerry, Jeremy Sentman. The process, as it always does, has come up with a better product. We've addressed all the concerns of the neighbors. We've made multiple um, uh, plan changes. We've agreed to multiple conditions that have never been put, placed on other religious institutions in this area. And we did it. Are we complaining about it? No. It was the right thing to do. So at this point, I think, you know, let's take a look at this, take a step back, put the size in perspective, but take all the impact and put it in perspective, and we respectfully request your affirmative vote on this. Of course, we're available for any questions you may have. Thank you. All right, well, I'd like to first uh, say thank you, Mr. Len. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thank you all uh, for being here this evening and, and for uh, speaking and uh, for being so polite and courteous and patient that is uh, very important here to council chambers, and we appreciate it. Uh, I'd also like to thank the, the resident group who has worked with uh, our city council and with ICN uh, among uh, staff and others uh, in good faith uh, to continue to try to find uh, a, a compromise that uh, everybody could, could uh, live with. And I'm, I think that that's, uh, again, something that Naperville does very well, and we appreciate all the effort from all of you. Uh, we will now uh, hear from the City Council. Councilwoman Taylor. Thank you, Mayor. I want to reiterate what uh, the Mayor said here. Uh, you know, think about when you come up with an agreement or compromise, whatever you want to call it here, that there's always, uh, you know, someone who spent their career doing negotiations here, that there's a, uh, it's often hard, it's often emotional, and it's a process. And I want to thank for everybody involved for being open-minded and willing to work together to come up with something that's not necessarily perfect for each side, uh, but something that uh, you know, we can 
have in our community moving forward here. So I want to thank everyone for their willingness to be open. I want to thank for everyone on council uh, this past week um, for their willingness to be open and to uh, talk and you know share their concerns and to come with remedies. Um, I want to thank staff for all the time and effort up to even to the last minute here today. Um, and I want to, you know, particularly throw a, a you know, throughout here to uh, Councilman Kelly, um, you know, for all the time that uh, um, put into this uh, this week. And uh, so it's been a um, an interesting process, but it has been a process. And I'm happy uh, to say that tonight to that I will be voting for this uh, agreement as laid out by uh, attorney Len Munson here and as uh, um, agreed to by uh, the uh, Naperville Residents for Sustainable Development, the group who had been leading the charge in throughout planning and zoning and uh, bringing up all the concerns that the neighborhoods had here about the uh, project leading up to where we are now today. So thank you, everybody. Councilman Hinterlong. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, just to uh, pile on here, um, thank you to uh, Tall Grass residents and all the other residents uh, involved in this process with ICN and ICN. Uh, thank you for continuing to uh, come to the table. I want to thank staff for their long, hard efforts throughout this process, as well as uh, I see Chairman Hansen from the Planning and Zoning Commission here as well. Thank you for your leadership with that commission and all your commissioners that spent a lot of long nights here hashing this out. It hasn't been easy for anybody. Um, um, I also want to thank uh, Councilwoman Taylor and Councilman uh, Kelly for really carrying the water for the council here and, and uh, you know, really uh, digging in and uh, getting both sides to um, really come together and, and give us something we can all agree on here. Um, just as with any controversial project in this town, um, I know I, I know some of us don't like the, the word, um, um, you know, compromise, but um, at the end of the day, what I've seen in the last 13 years is when you reach compromise, both sides aren't happy. And I think that's where we are tonight. I think there's been concessions on both sides, um, emotionally, as well as, uh, you know, with uh, what we have before us, as far as uh, all the physical aspects to this uh, uh, project. So um, I think, uh, you know, where we've landed, I think, uh, is a good compromise as a start in our process. Um, we will be, or you will be, uh, part of the process going forward in every phase. Um, as uh, one of the speakers said, um, that's what made this get to where it is, is having voices heard from both sides. That will continue with this uh, um, project. Uh, if the votes turn out the way I think they will. And uh, I think that's good. Um, nobody wants to take anybody's voices away. Um, that's how Naperville got built. Um, and believe me, I, I was on plan commission as well when we used to go to two in the morning when every new subdivision would come before us. And, you know, nobody wanted anything in their backyard. Um, the good thing was that I really appreciated from the residents here is that they didn't have that attitude that, you know, not in my backyard. They just wanted sensibility, reasonability um, with what was going to go in their backyard. They weren't against the mosque. Um, you know, when I first met with them, I thought, well, you know, here goes another meeting with residents that at the end of the day, they don't want anything in their backyard. And this was not the case. Not at all. They just wanted to be heard, and uh, you know, and they're going to want to be heard in the future, and we're granting that to them, and I and I think that's great, 
Um, with that, I uh, fully support this. Um, and again, thank you for everyone involved in getting us here tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Councilwoman Gustin. Thank you, Mayor. I also want to give some thanks and also Naperville is a friendly, accepting community as Fatima Allah said, we are one Naperville and the process has divided but also united two different groups. And I will say I was happy that the residents stepped up and had their voice heard. I remember back in May, I got this material from the residents and I thought, oh boy, it's gonna be one of these, we just don't want it. We don't want anything. We like it just being a farmland. But that wasn't the position they took. They took the position of neighbors in favor of a neighborhood mosque. That speaks to what Naperville is. And so from that point forward, they worked within the system. They worked within the Planning and Zoning Commission, which I sat on for 10 years. I know how much hard work our commissioners put in on every single case that they hear. And I'm so grateful we have those residents to be volunteers and to listen, not only to the residents, but listen to ICN's attorney and, and members of ICN. So we as a community are very, very blessed, very blessed. And when I was on Planning Commission, we heard uh, for the expansion of ICN on Ogden Avenue. And so that was one of the recommendations that was sent forward to City Council to the, allow the expansion. In addition, when the property was annexed in from Will County, from unincorporated, again, it was in the process. So the process does work. It can be very, very painful. Um, I will say, Molly, um, very emotional, but the hard work and dedication that she put in on behalf of all the residents uh, was amazing. And she was always respectful, as everyone was always respectful. And we're very blessed to have a community um, like that. I also wanted to say with the changes that ICN and the residents, um, the residents have come forward to me just saying what their concerns were. And I actually reached out to ICN's counsel. He actually took my phone call, which he always does. And we had a conversation of how do we resolve this? What does this look like? Um, and I think what we've come up with is a very good uh, solution. Um, it, it allows for public notice. Um, it allows for staff involvement. Uh, it allows for council review and approval. And, and I will say we are elected officials and to be honest with you, the buck stops with us. Um, so if there's anything that somebody has a concern with, you can talk to all these other people on the dais, but not me. Just kidding, just kidding. Um, so just so the residents know, we are truly engaged in this and we're excited. Um, I'm excited to see uh, the development of the mosque. I know I was in Turkey and got to go to the Blue Mosque um, and my family, some of my family are Muslim. So I'm very excited about um, the process that's being made. Um, but I also wanna thank you all for being so respectful the residents being respectful, the ICN members being respectful, their representative being respectful. We couldn't have asked for a better environment. Um, and so I just, I wanted to say thank you. And also thank you to my fellow council members who discussed the topic and also came together, I think, with a very pliable and um, perfect um, situation moving forward. So Mayor, I will be, uh, supporting this motion uh, with the changes read into the record by uh, Attorney Munson. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman White. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and uh, I'll just start off by saying I am in full support of, the, uh, of, of what's been proposed as well. Um, I've met with many of you out here already. Uh, I know ICN, some of the residents over in the, uh, in the tall grass area. And um, when we met, I, I think I told each group that I met with, we can make a decision, we'll make the decision at council, but the more and more you all work together as groups to try to work things out between, your, between yourselves, 
will make this a much more richer project and discussion and agreement when we can do that. And um, I can just say within the last few days, I, I can see from hearing everything here on the dais that um, uh, this vote's probably not gonna even be close. And that's because of the hard work that was done out here. That requires leadership, folks. And we had some great leaders that were out here making things happen from all parties, uh, from the council. Um, I'm, folks that I met with, uh, uh, Tara, Molly, folks over at ICN, uh, I appreciate your efforts in, into um, getting us to where we are right now. I know it wasn't easy, I know, but I do know where we started and where we are right now. I think the gentleman back there said it as well. Um, we are so, further, so much further ahead in this process um, that this hard work uh, was worth it. So uh, my hat's off to the leadership and for all the hard work that was done in that regard. Um, I know there's some concerns about size uh, and the number of people coming in. Um, as, I, as I've met with some folks, I, I, I said, look, I think we're, you're limited by the number of parking spots in there. So with, with the size of, the, of what's going in right now, at least until we get to phase five, you're only gonna have so many cars in there, so many people that are attending services and so on, just from the limitation of the parking, okay? Um, one thing I would ask, and I'm from speaking with ICN, it seemed like they were in agreement as well, is that during um, service or during times of worship that uh, we don't have parking into the, into the neighborhood. I think we should be able to get it all into, uh, into the parking lot. I think we're in agreement with that. So uh, staff, if, if, if we can potentially look at ways of making it happen, uh, that would be great. Um, I know there's some plans to expand 248th Avenue as well. Um, staff, at some point, you may want to kind of give us a, uh, an update on when we think that might happen uh, from a timeline standpoint. And, um, you know, I'll, finally, I'll say this. Um, you know, I've been a big proponent of, um, you know, of an, ex an inclusive community that values diversity. And, and, and this is just really uh, excites me seeing the things that have taken place here. Um, the hard work that's been done, again, I keep emphasizing it from all parties, and it just really, um, like you said up here earlier, just really talks about us being an inclusive community, and this is a demonstration of that as far as I'm concerned. So I will be in a full support of the ordinance as it is written. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilwoman Sullivan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I echo the sentiments of my, my colleagues. Um, to all the people in this room who, and who are at home right now and put their time and their sweat in and put away their egos to um, work out a compromise for the community, I thank you. And there's dozens of you on everywhere, so thank you for that. I'm excited for this project. I have tremendous faith in our staff and in ICN to ensure that this is a safe community enriching project for worshipers, for neighbors, and for all of Naperville. Um, today and throughout uh, the next several decades. So I'm in full support. Councilman Kelly. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and I'm in support as, as well, certainly. Um, I want to start by saying thank you to everybody who's worked on this project, echoing it's, it's already been said probably at this point, but um, thank you to ICN's members, Attorney Monson. Uh, the patience over the past year has been incredible. <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you for your willingness to work with everybody. Uh, for the Tallgrass neighbors, uh, the exact same is true. Your patience and perseverance through this process um, ha has been very commendable and it's been great working with everyone um, on, on every side of this issue. Uh, for our staff, they've put in a tremendous amount of time uh, and, and work. Um, all the way through and planning and zoning commission that that was a lot of hours <laughs> I give you guys credit I, I watched pretty much all of it um, but you guys were living it in, in, in person in real time that was uh, a, a tremendous effort by planning and zoning and, and really to be commended um, throughout the whole process uh, my perspective is that ICN is a uh, critical component of our community uh, they add so much, uh, for, and they've done so for so many years, and it's clear they need more space. There's no way around it. I think everyone agrees. 
and they've owned this land for many years, and, and this is the spot for them to add in the community. Uh, it's also critical, uh, in my opinion, for, for any development in the city, whether it's commercial, residential, religious, of any kind, uh, that the su surrounding neighbors need to have a collaborative voice in that process. And I think that happened here, and I think it'll continue to happen the way that this uh, ordinance is structured um, in the years and, and potentially decades to come. Uh, over the past few weeks, I can personally attest to the great effort Attorney Monson mentioned and uh, Councilwoman uh, Taylor referenced. So many people worked so hard over the past few weeks to bridge these final gaps. Um, I think if you watched all the Planning and Zoning Commission hearings, you couldn't have been, uh, you know, it wouldn't have been that hard to believe uh, that a compromise was out of reach at some point. It, it probably seemed too difficult to imagine when there's hundreds of speakers on both sides of, of the issues. Um, but through the hard work and, and the uh, ability and willingness to compromise, we came here tonight um, with only a handful uh, of speakers total and, and very limited opposition, which I think is really a testament to the community as a whole and to the willingness to compromise on both sides, maybe, maybe a little more than each side wanted to, uh, but they, they did it and, and the deal got done. And, and I'm really excited to see the mosque get built, uh, the school get built, be a part of our community. And I think tonight the whole process and the, the willingness to come together as a council uh, and the community as a whole is really the best that we have to offer. So thank you to everyone. Thank you. Councilman Holzar. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in my view tonight, we're here um, talking a lot about faith. Um, we're reviewing the request of one of Naperville's largest faith communities. We're reviewing the work of neighbors who worked with other neighbors in good faith to reach a solution to address um, each other's concerns. And we're here tonight as a body of nine acting to faithfully execute the duties of the office upon which we have been elected. Um, to go into a little bit of the specifics of my decision making, um, I actually agreed wholeheartedly with Reverend Winters' comments earlier. Um, I appreciated the, the foresight that ICN put forward, um, putting forth a 40-year plan. Um, and I understand that that's a lot to digest at once, but I think it also showed transparency and it allowed for a public process um, to happen to, to, for people to voice their opinions about what this whole thing would look like down the road. Uh, another thing that uh, Reverend Winters talked about was the importance of a free exercise of religion. Um, he's actually my pastor. This is something I talked to him about over the weekend. Um, to be honest, the, the final um, agreement that was reached, the one that will be passed tonight, uh, was something that I'd struggled with personally a little myself. Um, in my view, uh, from a constitutional lens, um, I have no issues with um, restricting the size of a worship facility at um, as was done by putting off faith, phase five and requiring a um, conditional use for that. Um, in my view, no problem with putting off a gym. Um, I don't think that's a constitutionally protected space. Uh, for me, I, I had a harder time with phase three, a fellowship hall, um, which to me goes, goes directly to um, the right to assembly, which is in the First Amendment. Um, adding additional council approval requirement for that in the future. I'm, I'm just not familiar with any other faith group in Naperville that's been asked to do that. Um, nevertheless, I understood that um, what was put forth to the ICN community what, was that this would be the compromise that could gain the support of the neighbors. And I think it's very important for them to go into the community with the full support of our council and with the belief that they're, the neighbors are welcoming them as, um, as welcome members of the community and they're not coming in in an unwanted uh, way. I want to especially give some credit uh, to Molly and Kaver. I remember when I first met them, um, they were very gracious in hosting me as they hosted all of the rest of you uh, in their backyards, showing, us, showing me what it was really like, um, what they were looking at, and I, I think they had a lot of, of very legitimate um, concerns about traffic, traffic, size, safety. And I know that some of those concerns still 
still remain, but I, I know how much it took, uh, Molly, for you to stand up, and in spite of having some of those concerns to still be able to, um, to say in good faith that you could support this, I, I appreciate that. I think that was a sign of, um, of great respect of the process. Um, I will say on a, on a more unfortunate note, I was not very pleased to see, to be surprised at 515 to learn that the president of one of the HOAs that's involved has stated that his HOA is in opposition to this project. Um, numerous council members have referred to there being sides and the sides having reached an agreement. In my view, if an HOA is saying they oppose this, is there actually a compromise? Or is it just that ICN was asked to make some concessions? I, I'm bothered by that personally. Um, but I appreciate that ICN still worked with the group that was acting in good faith, Molly's group, um, to get there. That's all I'll say about that. Um, to quote a great Muslim leader, Muhammad Ali, fighter, it's a lack of faith that makes people afraid of meeting challenge, challenges, and I believed in myself. And I think there's a lot of people in this room who have been wanting this project to happen for a long time, and you're on the verge of seeing it come to fruition. Congratulations. Tonight I'll cast a vote with faith that the ICN community and this neighborhood will build a bond over the coming decades. They'll cast a vote with, I'll cast a vote in faith of a diverse and welcoming community and cast a vote um, that people will find a way to work together. I thank all the parties involved for your hard work, for your commitment to an inclusive community and your faith in a workable solution. Thank you. Councilman Leal. I really struggle to make this decision, and it is a tough one. I've been hearing both sides since uh, the election time. I've been meeting with both sides and listening carefully. I really agree with much of what my fellow council members have said, and so I don't want to repeat any of that. What I'd like to add is that as I approach these tough decisions, I really look forward into the future, and I can't really say what's gonna happen in the future. I mean, who could have predicted this pandemic and so forth? So I'm really pleased that we haven't handcuffed future councils, of which may, I may not be a part, in terms of handling future conditions and data that may appear uh, regarding this project. So I'm really able to get on board with it because as these future phases come about, the council will have input, and they will be able to deal with those choices based on information that is available at that time. So I'm really proud of that part of it. Uh, other than that, I'm, gonna, I'm going to support uh, this project, and uh, thank you for listening. Okay, thank you. All right, well, you've heard from everybody. I'll, I'll pitch in here a little bit. I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to vote. I'm going to make you wait for that. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I will say this, I, you know, like uh, many of the council members, um, watched our planning and zoning. And I, and I just want to speak a little bit about this planning and zoning uh, board, because this was, a, this was a really, really heavy, heavy lift. Uh, the work that they did, the hours and hours and hours spent, I mean, I watched so much of it, and it was painful. You all know it was painful. Uh, there were times when I was entertained. There was times when I was angry. There was times when I was throwing my shoe at the TV. I mean, it, it, every emotion it seemed like it went through. But uh, I will say that, um, and in particular, uh, uh, Chairman Hansen, um, the professionalism, the discipline, uh, the patience uh, that was demonstrated uh, in, in, in those board meetings just exemplified uh, the good work of our Naperville citizens uh, because these are all volunteer positions. All that time that they put in was all volunteer positions. And so uh, really a, a huge uh, debt of gratitude uh, to all of our planning and zoning members for, uh, for doing that. That's a, those are, it's a tough task, and uh, they did it just really, really well, and we should all be grateful for them. Um, and yeah, I mean, this was a, this was a long process, and uh, I, I think... Uh, Councilman Kelly mentioned, and, and I think everybody here 
we, we all probably heard from most of you many times uh, during that, you know, during that whole process. And so a lot of information. But I think we got to the place where, um, uh, where we are today because of that process. And, 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 and as frustrating as it is going through it, it is necessary because at the end, uh, we really get good products in this community. So um, that's a great thing. Again, uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, the good work from uh, council members who, who worked hard to try to find this spot and the community members out there that have been working for, uh, you know, in the, in the working hard. I mean, they put in a lot of hours too. You know, uh, you know talk about the planning zone members, these, these volunteers uh, worked very hard as well. And of course, all, all of our ICN uh, board members, the extra time you put in. So this was a huge effort from a lot of different people and, and uh, uh, you know, again, this is what makes uh, Naperville uh, such a great place and makes our, our system such a respected system. All right. Um, I think that is all we need to do in terms of uh, protocols here. So I'm going to ask uh, Councilwoman Gustin if she will make a motion. Mayor, I move to pass the ordinance approving a conditional use for a religious facility in the R1 district and an owner's acknowledgement and acceptance agreement for the Islamic Center of Naperville, located at 3540 248th Avenue, ICN, PZ case 20-1-52, with changes read into the record by ICN attorney Munson. Second, Henry Long. Roll call. Holzauer. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Leong. Aye. Sullivan. Aye. Taylor. Aye. White. Aye. Cherico. Aye. Gustin. Aye. Hinterlong. Aye. Motion carries 9-0. Congratulations, folks. Thank you. All right, we are going to take a uh, seven-minute break. Oh. oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on here. Wait. Keep it going. Okay. Scratch that. I was just trying to just, try. you know, sometimes I get, sometimes I get uh, stairs. And if you guys are ready to keep going, that's fine. 